Okay, let's look at a different example here. Suppose we have home prices. Suppose in a community the average home price is 250000 and the standard deviation is $30,000. Okay, now we know home prices look like this. Okay, and the mean is somewhere over here, a little bit pushed over that way, right? Okay, now let's look at... the sample distribution of x bar for n equals 30. So the question is, what is that saying? That's saying, here's, I'm going to put mu here, the same mu, 250,000. That's saying, let's take a sample of size of 30 houses, random sample, of 30 houses, and find the average price of those 30 houses. So I take 30 houses, boom, say it's that. I take 30 other houses, find the average price, boom. Take another 30 houses, find the average price, boom. Another 30, boom. Another 30, boom. Okay, I'm going to be getting different values. These are, this is what we call the um, sample distribution of x bar because these are samples sample averages this data over here on this one those are individual homes okay. and something really great happens here no matter what this distribution looks like it's skewed right this distribution is going to end up being normal. This will be approximately normal as long as n is bigger than 30 or equal to 30 or close to that. Okay. This is a great result, a statistical result. It's called the central limit theorem. And I will show you a video on this. I'll post something on here in a little bit um, that will help illustrate this. But for right now, I want you to just kind of imagine, if I take 30 houses here, right, and I calculate the average, it's actually, I'm going to get something here, or I'm going to get something here, or I'm going to get something here, right? Okay. The average is going to end up bouncing around whatever this average is, okay? So mu sub x bar is going to be 250,000. And the standard deviation of x bar is going to be 30,000 divided by the square root of 30. Okay. This is my this is my formula sigma over the square root of n. This is a great result. Okay. That we can use and um, the question is, what are we going to do with it? Well, we're going to do things like this. Okay. Suppose I pick 30 houses um, and get x bar equals 300,000. Well, that's pretty far high, isn't it? Let's do 280,000, 270,000. Okay. Um, what are the chances of doing that if the population mean is 250,000 and the standard deviation is 30,000 question mark so assuming this is true 
And if I pick 30 houses and get X bar is 270,000, what are the chances of that happening? Okay, is that likely to happen or not likely to happen? Well, let's go up here. Let me move this out of the way. Okay. Well, let's take a look at this. Let's look at the distribution of all samples of size 30. Well, that's this over here. So I'm just going to redraw it down here. So I know that the average is going to be 250,000. That's this right here. And the standard deviation is going to be 30,000 divided by square root of 30, which is, let's see here. Five, four, seven, seven. Okay, so that's the standard deviation. Okay. So the question is, what's the chance that I get a sample out here of 270,000? What's the chance that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to adjust this and say, what's the chance that I get 270,000 or more for my sample? Okay. So I'm asking, what's the probability that X bar is over 270,000? This is like that problem we did in the last video. It's a, just a normal distribution curve or a problem. Okay. So I can go ahead and do normal CDF. I can do the 270,000. I could find the z-score as well. The min, the max, is a number much bigger than that. The mean is 20 250,000, and the standard deviation is 5477. Seven. You already know this is going to be a really small percent, don't you? Because the standard deviation is 5,000 roughly, and this is a lot of those standard deviations away. So let's go ahead and do this and see what we get on our calculator. Normal CDF, I'm going to do 270. Nine, much bigger number than that, 99999, 2500, and I get 1.3 times 10 to the 4th, which is 0.1234, so it's that chance of happening, okay, which is 0.013%. Okay, if I found the z-score, I could have just said, oh, the z-score is 270,000 minus 250,000 divided by 5477. And if I did that, I would get, is that 20,000 divided by 5477? 3.65 standard deviations. That's a lot of standard deviations away, isn't it? That's pretty, pretty extreme. So let's go back to the question that we asked. We said if I pick 30 houses with, and get 270,000, what are the chances of doing that? Well, if I assume the original population was this right here, okay, then my sample distribution, this is my distribution of all samples, where n is 30, looks like this. It's normal, okay, by what, what's called the central limit theorem. Okay, so now this is normal. I can answer that question. I can say, oh, the chance that I get 270,000 or bigger is tiny, okay? So where are we heading with this is that, or where, what are we doing with this is this exact statement that I'm about to make. Is this likely to happen? And the answer is not likely. Okay, so if it's not likely, what are your conclu What are the two conclusions you could make? The one conclusion is you could say, this is my lucky day. I can't believe that just happened, but it happened. I happened to get, you know, a sample, a random sample of 30, and it has a small chance of happening, but it did. Or your other conclusion could be, you know what? I don't think it's really 250,000. 
I think it's bigger than 250,000. I think maybe the real average is like 260 or 265 or something closer to where I'm at. That's where we're heading with it, okay? All right, let's do one last problem here. And let's do this one right here. Um, weight gain during pregnancy. The mean weight gain during pregnancy is 30 pounds. I'm sorry, ladies. With a standard deviation of 12.9. Um, weight gain during pregnancy is skewed to the right. An obstetrician obtains a random sample of 35 low-income patients and determines their mean weight during pregnancy was 36.2. Does this suggest anything unusual? Okay, so... We're saying the weight gain during pregnancy is 30, the mean weight, and it's skewed to the right. So here's the average. U is 30, standard deviation is 12.9. So most of the women are a little bit less than 30. Some are really far out there. Um, when we are in the hospital with one of my sons who was born, he was like seven pounds. There was this baby that was being pushed down the hall and I talked to the dad and he was so proud. He says, my son's 11 pounds. He's gonna be a linebacker or something like that when he gets older. And I'm just thinking, your poor wife. Um, but uh, anyway, so weight gain skewed to the right. An obstetrician obtains a random sample of 35 low-income patients, so N is 35, and determines their mean weight, that's X bar, is 36.2 pounds. Okay, are you surprised? So that's the question, surprised or not? Um, well, 36.2 is over here, but it's not an individual of 36.2, it's an average of 35 that are 36.2. So that means some are above and some are below. Okay, so let's look at what we call the sample distribution of X bar. Okay, and this is for 35 um, people. So, What's the average going to be? The average of my samples. Well, it's going to bounce around 30. And the standard deviation, 12.9 divided by the square root of 35. Okay. And this is normal by what we call the central limit theorem. So let's see, what is that, 12.9 divided by square root of 35. We get 2.18. Okay, so I'll draw the normal curve. Oops. It's usually easier to draw the curve first and then put the average in the middle. Okay, so we've got 36.2, and you can already tell that that's not likely to happen, right? Because 30 to 36 is six units, roughly, and the standard deviation is two, so two, four, six. This is like three standard deviations away. So let's go ahead and look at what's the probability that X bar is bigger than or equal to 36.2. Okay, so I'm gonna do normal CDF again, and I'm going to put in 36.2, comma, 9999. Nine, nine, nine. Oops, 9, yeah, comma, 30, comma, 2.18. Okay, so I'll write that down. Normal CDF. Yours, most of your calculators, I say, think, say, what's the lower, what's the upper? So this is the lower, the upper, the mean and the standard deviation. Okay. And if you do that, I get 0 0.002, which is 0.2%. So the question asked, does this suggest anything unusual way up here? And the answer is, yeah, that seems pretty unusual, okay? Because it only has a 0.2% chance of getting 36.2 or bigger. 
Okay, so yes, I'm very surprised. Okay, that that happened. All right, so on eight one, you're going to be asked problems a lot like this. Okay, where it just asks you information. It's going to ask you information about the mean and the standard deviation of what's called the sampling distribution, and you're going to be f figuring out um, areas under curves using normal or normal um, CDF function. All right, so give that a shot. Again, check the solutions um, because they explain it explains how to do each one of the problems as well. And then uh, shoot me an email if you're if after you look through it and look at the section you're still struggling. Let me know and um, what you're having issues with, and I'll uh, we'll figure out what to do either on a Zoom conference or I'll make another video or whatever it takes. All right, I want you guys to get this. This section is key eight one and eight two to get the rest of the class. So we'll make sure you get it dialed in. All right, there you go.